Both the kids are taking a nap right now, which is rare. So I thought I would go ahead and do some crafty things with you guys today. Welcome back to Lima Bean Living. If you guys are new here, my name is Emily. Welcome to my motherhood channel where I take care of all things mom. Today, while the kids are resting, which is rare that Aubrey's taking a nap at the same time as Jack, she rarely takes naps anyways. I think she's probably going through a growth spurt. But anyways, while they are resting, I thought I would take out some of the supplies I've been collecting to make a winter themed sensory bin. And then we're gonna make like a fall craft using some tissue paper and contact paper from the Dollar Tree. And then I'm gonna show you guys a fun little busy book from Amazon. Okay. I've got my go-to sensory bin. This is the standard bin that I put the sensory items in because I really like how it has like a little lip on it so that you could put it side by side and kind of have a more contained area as well as like something else to set it up with. These are really nice because they stack nice as well. But this is my bin that I will be putting the stuff into. And I know this video I don't know, this probably stirs up a debate that I see online a lot about when to celebrate Christmas and when not to. I am under the opinion of just embracing fall in November and not rushing for that Christmas excitement, particularly because that's kind of the point of Advent is to be excited and be like, you know, anticipating Jesus's coming and all of that stuff. And I think setting up like the first of November, it either prolongs that excitement, like to the point where you're just over it. Like so many people are just over Christmas, the day after Christmas, when the Christmas season actually goes into January. So I'm more of like a, the embrace fall, embrace Thanksgiving, and then get into the Christmas spirit. But I also understand the excitement for wanting to set up for Christmas because it's fun. There's the pretty lights, there's, you know, the fun recipes, the fun foods and drinks that you can get at coffee shops and things like that. So I don't know, I can see it from the other side, but I kind of like to just embrace fall because I don't feel like we live the fall season enough like it's not long enough in my opinion so the reason why i say that is i have like a fall activity a winter activity and then my like anytime activity with this busy book so let me go ahead and share with you guys a little bit about this busy book before we get into the other activities so i'd like to thank mage toys for sponsoring this portion of today's video and sending us this busy book so i have actually made my own in the past but i love it when there's fabric with designs already on it so that's one of like the perks of buying some of them offline but this is a busy book that has some pictures on the outer areas we see some cute little animals and their names next to the pictures to kind of help the kids recognize those letters and those words as well as the alphabet on this side and it's secured with this little loop around a button which is always nice and I'm not gonna lie Aubrey saw this and stole it so she's already gotten into like some of the things and ripped some out so obviously it is attractive for five-year-olds as well so this is one of the inside covers and there's like really great practice for just basic things like buttons and snaps and you can make the little things turn. You can practice tying a shoe, some more buttons, and like practicing kind of these things, which can be hard for kids. So I really like how they've kind of, you know, involved a bunch of different like life skills on this page. And then each of the individual pages can actually be like zipped off, which is awesome if you are like out and about with multiple kids and you can like give a page to a kid and then give another page to another kid and you know split up the book as much as you need to. But this page has colors and you can't really see it very well, but they do have some Velcro dots on the letters here. And there were some inserts that were given that I said Aubrey already kind of got into. She was so excited to see this book. But they have the little crayons here with the Velcro. So the idea is that you would match up the crayon where it belongs and stick it on and help the kids like learn their colors and learn how to spell them and whatnot. 
So if any of you guys watched the busy book that I made, I made kind of something similar. It was like a color ring, but it was made with magnets and puffy paint. But like I said, I really like it when like the words and stuff are actually just printed on the fabric. And here I'm not worried about any of the magnets coming off and like the kids swallowing them or anything like that because I did use smaller magnets. So I don't know. I, I like this because it's a little bit more childproof than you know gluing some magnets in some felt okay so we got all those colors set up so now the kids can pull them off and stick them back on again and have fun with this page on the other page we have the numbers so that one comes with these little rectangles with a cute picture as well as the word written out and the numeral as well so I might kind of clean up the sides by cutting off the little bits after you know tearing it from its little frame but we got all these numbers on the page now and something I really like is how it just shows the number here but you have like the additional picture and stuff to kind of go with it and that the colors match so that you know the younger kids are kind of assisted in where things belong. So this next page is kind of cool because it has like these cute little animals but you have each animal in like three different puzzle pieces to go and fit on the page and it kind of shows you like the shape of each piece as well outlined on the on the page itself to help the kids but I think it's kind of cute and just like a fun little puzzle piece activity. On the other side of that page we have practicing shapes again Aubrey kind of like ripped off some of the pieces but the shapes uh, are stuck on using velcro again and the kids can just use this page to kind of master different shapes the next page is probably more for older kids not so much like Jack's age but you can practice like what month of the year it is and these cute little things just slide I really like how they designed it with the little button and the little arrow you can work on the days of the week as well as the time of day and you can work on like the day of the month by either pointing the one to the left or to the right and these are the last two pages so this page is like a little crab which is some of these fun little I don't know what these guys are called but this is a good thing to practice with the kids as well but you can like pull them and you can even pull it tight if you want they can practice that and then these are buttoned on so you can take them off and intertwine them or whatever and just have the kids have fun with that and this last page is more like life skills zippers more clips these little guys are tricky sometimes for little kids these snaps also oh my gosh and this little cloud is fun this is like the only thing that makes noise so if you don't want your kid to make noise if you're at church or something you can always give them the pages by like you know unzipping them and keep this page like in your purse but other than this little squeaky toy everything else is nice and quiet so a great toy to bring to church so a lot of you guys who have viewed like my personal busy books have said that like you're not crafty enough to like make anything like that for yourself and I really think that this busy book is like a great substitute if you're not crafty and you really want your kid to practice life skills but also practice their numbers and letters and colors and have something quiet to work on when you are out and about and need them to be a little bit more busy and you don't wanna give them a screen. So again, I'd like to thank Mage Toys for sponsoring this portion of today's video and sending us this amazing busy book. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this segment, Aubrey was so excited to like see this that she stole it from me and hid it in her room for a little while. So I know that when she wakes up, she's gonna be super excited to play with it.
but let's go ahead and move on to working on our fall craft before we get into our winter one. I did something similar around Valentine's Day. And you just have to pick up some clear contact paper from the Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna have Aubrey work on this one as well, but I'll just do a sample one. You're gonna need two equal sized pieces. So I just cut mine in half. And then you want to get fall colored tissue paper. Now you can go ahead and cut these like in tiny little squares, or you can actually have your kids practice like ripping them. Sometimes the, you know, those practicing those fine motor skills of like ripping something like that can be really good for the kids. So I'm just gonna go ahead and rip off some pieces. But before I do that, let me get my one piece of my contact paper ready and put it sticky side up. If you need to, you can kind of bend the corners down to like stick it on your surface, but you want sticky side up. And you're gonna take your little ripped pieces and just stick them on. Now, my piece of contact paper here is kind of small, but you can you know make this as big or as small as you want. And you're just gonna take your tissue paper and stick it randomly around your contact paper, but you want to leave like the edges kind of leave it sticky. And you don't have to do like all the colors, like all the reds at once. You can really mix up and layer your looks. And as I was looking through my stash of tissue paper, I couldn't quite find orange, but I do think that obviously orange would look really nice in this little craft that I'm going to be assembling. All right, so I think I'm happy with that. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our other piece of contact paper and we're gonna put the sticky side down so making like the two sticky sides come together. And you just wanna smooth it out as best as you can. My contact paper was kind of old so there's like little air bubbles permanently in it. <laughs> okay, so now that we have this little kind of stained glass looking thing, I'm gonna cut mine out into whatever shape I want. I'm gonna do like a maple leaf and have this little stained glass maple leaf. And the inspiration was something like I did when I was eight years old, so in 98, but I, you know, had this card stock and I guess I just used like Mod Podge or something and glued on squares of tissue paper to make this little leaf. So this is another thing that you guys could do with the tissue paper, you know, a similar craft if you don't wanna go get the contact paper. But I'm gonna try my best to cut out this maple leaf shape. And when you're cutting, like try to include also some of the sandwich contact paper that doesn't have any tissue paper in between. And this will kind of like help seal the image in as well. Now I'm kind of just obviously doing this freehand. If you don't feel confident enough to cut a maple leaf shape freehand, you can always, you know, trace, draw something on or trace it and draw Sharpie and then cut on that as well. So it's not perfect, but it's my little stained glass leaf. Now you could write with Sharpie, like your kid's name and the year, and then use this as decoration. You could stick this up on a window and it gives a fun stained glass look. So in some ways, here are two crafts for the price of one, both using tissue paper, but just using different bases, either like a cardstock or the clear contact paper from Dollar Tree. And if I were to, you know, stick this on the window, this is kind of what it would look like. So again, that's a fall craft. It's not Halloween related, and it's just embracing the season that we're in. But if you want to get into that Christmas spirit, Dollar Tree still has all of their Christmas stuff like in full blast. So you can go ahead and grab the supplies I'm gonna show you to make this fun sensory bin. So I picked up a variety of things from the Dollar Tree. This doesn't belong in my sensory bin, but this was a fun little activity that uses little pom-poms and a little like white paper plate just to make a little reindeer. So I will be doing this with Aubrey, but that's not gonna be in my sensory kit. So I wanted her, because we have other sensory bins with like Play-Doh, with beans, with like kind of a kinetic sand type feel, I wanted this sensory bin for winter to be a different like texture. I didn't want it to be beans again. I didn't want it to be Play-Doh or anything like that. So I picked up some bags of white sand. Uh, I picked up three of these. They are 500 grams or a little over a pound each, as well as two bags of the faux snow. And the faux snow looks like it's gonna stick everywhere. Like if I were to just put the faux snow, I'm gonna, I'm, it's gonna be a tongue twister. I'm gonna get all mixed up. If I just put the faux snow 
in the box. I kind of feel like it would be staticky. So I'm hoping that by mixing it with the sand, it not only gives like the sand a fun glittery look, but it, I'm hoping the sand kind of balances it out and like weighs it down a bit. But to weigh these things down even more and to provide a separate sensory item, but something that's a little bit like more easy to separate from the sandy snow, I bought two different kinds of decorative rocks. So I bought like more like white ones as well as like ones that are colored but with a more like cool white tone to it rather than like super orangey. And my thought process behind with that was again, it'll be easy to separate from the sand slash faux snow and I can store it and we can use it for something else if we want like a different sensory bin. But also I think it would be fun because I have, you know, other items here like a little manger set up as well as like trees and a little home. And so if we create this little village, the rocks can like line driveways up to the house or like make a little road and they can be like purposeful in that sense as well. I also got probably way too many, but these like little Christmas trees, I couldn't decide on what color scheme I wanted to go with. So I just did silver, gold, and white. I don't know if they had any other colors, but I thought that these all went together and it was a safe bet. Aubrey loves pom-poms, so I had to throw in some green and red pom-poms. Got some little wooden shaped, like they look like little snowmen, which if we wanted to paint them later on, we can, but I'm just gonna keep them the wood. And then fun little snowflakes for her to play with. I really don't know. And then her grandma bought her some glitter or like a, like a glitter kit. And one of the pieces came off and I was like, well, we can mix this in with the snow if she wants. So let's go ahead and open up all these bags and set up the bin and watch a little time lapse of me doing it. So as usual, I kind of overbought for this bin, but I really like this little setup. I've had fun kind of assembling everything to make it feel like a fun little forest. The sand does kind of weigh down the like fake snow, so it doesn't get stuck everywhere, which I really like. Something I could probably add here are some like measuring spoons or something to like scoop up the sand with, but I know that, you know, Aubrey could just use her hands. I don't quite know how she'll work with these. Maybe I'll get some strings so she can like put string through the hole. But like I mentioned, oh gosh, this is heavy. Ugh. All right, so the lid could also be used. So I did assemble this little 3D thing. It was a little bit more difficult than I was anticipating to like fit the pieces in the grooves, but you know, this could be put here and then you could, you know, line the walkway, make like a little walkway up to the house, you know, rocks on either side and decorate something else. So it creates like an extra space for the kids to play while having maybe some of the more messy items in the actual container with a larger like you know edge but here you could put things that aren't going to get everywhere and still use it for play so i'm not going to open these up but these can obviously be you know mixed in and then easily taken out and i know that aubrey will enjoy playing with these and then i'm thinking we'll probably set up this little 3d manger together and again like there's only really one way to put these in and it's relatively straightforward but it's just you know you need a little bit of strength and you have to be gentle at the same time when putting the pieces in and then same goes with these this glitter i'm gonna wait until aubrey gets out here to like really mix it in it probably doesn't need it but i don't know she might want to mix it in with the snow but there you go that's my little sensory bin one thing I think I do need to mention is that when I will be packing this up, it won't be staying in this box. I will, you know, sift through and collect as many rocks as I can and put them in Ziploc bags, put the trees and the other little items to play with. Like they'll all go in one Ziploc bag and then the glittery sand will be in its own bag so that I can like use the rocks with a different bin if I want 
And so I'll clean it up that way. But since I'm not planning on using like a different setup for my sensory bin right now, I'm gonna leave it like this. But again, like I said, when I clean this up, all of the physical like items will go in one bag, the rocks will go in a separate bag, and the sand will go in another bag. But that wraps up today's video. Again, I'd like to thank Mage Toys for sending us that cool busy book. And I hope you guys enjoyed the fall and winter crafts. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you guys are new, I would love it if you stick around and subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Okay, turn around. Look cute. You look so cute. Does it look like magical, like a little winter area? What is this? It's sand, but it's pretend snow. You want to make it a friend. It feels so nice. What is this stuff? Rocks for you to play with. You could create like a little See walkway. See what it calls for. Mm -hmm. Which Christmas tree do I use? I like this one and that one. Mm -hmm. I think you also like the snowflakes. Well, what are the snowflakes? You can keep one in your room tonight, okay? Mm-hmm. And you can keep one snowman mm -hmm. in your room tonight, what too. Is a, what is snowman? In the corner near Mommy. Oh, you mean this? Mm-hmm. I don't want that. The only thing that I like is this. The trees? Mm hmm Why is it so fluffy? <laughs> Why is it so fluffy? Why is it so fluffy and glittery? Okay, so we get to play with this tomorrow. Deal? This truly is kind of on place. I have to fix it. Oh. Put it here. It was kind of bending, right? Mm hmm So I had to fix it, right? Mm hmm So, because I wanted it to look nice when I play with it. Mommy. Yeah? What can I keep in my room? What can I keep in my room? A snowflake and a snowman. And one white tree. One white one or one of these ones? A white one. Because the other ones are too glittery and the glitter goes everywhere. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pick a baby one. Okay. Ew, I stole it. Let's get this off. I want to have this because it's pokey wokey. I'll feel these. Oh, yeah. This. Oh, I want to put some in it. Now, it's just a little too sweet. I really like this. Good. Okay, and grab a snowflake. What else can I keep? One snowflake and one snowman. And then I got to put it away. What is that? What is this stuff? What is this stuff on the side? This is like a 3D little setup. Mommy, mm -hmm. what time can I call these? Do we have to call these? We can. can we I could call? even we could even put glue on them and then sprinkle the snow on it. Oh, that'd be too easy. Like I take this, yeah. and then I think yeah. I after it has glue, it. and then it will stick to the snowflake. Does that yeah. sound like a good idea? I'll Let's do that. The... Um, what? Can I put some snow on this tree? Yeah, and we'll do even more tomorrow. Okay. Say goodbye to the sensory bin. Goodbye. I don't feel like this one more time. It's so fluffy, fluffy. Woohoo! You've made it to the end of the video. If you didn't know already, every Monday and Friday, you can find motherhood and lifestyle content on this channel. And since us moms have to do it all, that may mean yummy recipes, easy DIYs, mom hacks, cleaning and organization, or just a combo of everything. Please know that you are loved and you are made for greatness, and I will catch you in the next one.